everyone, my name is Ajoika and I'm a part of the class of 2013. It's an absolute pleasure to be able to share with you a snippet of my life story and what I have been up to since leaving school. I was born in Colombo, Sri Lanka and I was given up for adoption as a newborn to Mother Theresa's orphanage. I was adopted by a Sri Lankan couple residing in Melbourne at the age of three months. Unfortunately, due to strict migration and intercountry adoption laws, I was unable to come home immediately. I came home to Melbourne on my second birthday, and shortly after that, I was diagnosed with a moderate to severe hearing loss. A diagnosis that came at a complete shock to my parents. I wore hearing aids for most of my childhood and adolescent years. Um, but unfortunately, my hearing det det deteriorate over the years. So when I was 15, I was told that I needed a cochlear implant. Either I get a cochlear implant or I learn sign language. And being oral all, all my life, sign that Auslan was not an option for me. I could, I could learn it, but I just could not see myself um, learning it. So I needed the cochlear implant. So I got the cochlear implant when I was 16 and ever since then I have regretted why I did not get it earlier. It was a life changing experience. I was able to hear sounds that I had never heard in my life. I, For example I heard birds chirping, I heard the microwave beeping, I didn't even realise that shops play music. So I heard all those sounds at 16 and I couldn't believe that I missed out on all this all my life. I completed BCE and then once I finished my last exam paper I took off to Sri Lanka and um, volunteered at the orphanage that I came from at Mother Theresa's and also reconnected with the nun who looked after me at, during my time there. She's a New Zealander, her name is Sister Aroha, and we connected instantly. It was as if she has been in my life all this time. I also met my biological mother during that period. So I was only 18 when I met her. It was a traumatic experience. It was, um, it was nothing like in the movies or in documentaries that you see. It was very traumatic and I suffered a lot from it. I It took me a few years to recover from the whole experience. But I, when I did meet her, I learned that she was deaf and she has led a completely different life to what I have led. She has never been to school, she has never worn hearing aids, she can't read or write, she can only lip read in Tamil, and I don't know Tamil, so the communication there was a communication barrier, sadly, but she still was a very smart and wise person that I met. She told me to focus on my studies, despite not getting an education herself. So it was amazing meeting her. Um, I came back to Australia from that trip, saying to my parents, I need the second cochlear implant. I know I'm not hearing well at all. I had the opportunities, I need to take it, I should not take this for granted. So I underwent my second cochlear implant during my first year at uni. I went to Melbourne Uni and completed a Bachelor of Arts, majoring in International Politics and Criminology. It was a challenging first year at uni. I did struggle a lot. I couldn't hear the lecturers. The note-taking system was not the best. Um, and I learned that I had to be an advocate for myself and for someone who was not very proud of being deaf, it was a massive challenge to be an advocate and tell my teachers, I can't hear, I need help. Um, I, I would say I really only accepted my hearing loss when I was 21. Um, that was because I under I went to, I participated in a beauty pageant, um, Miss Sri Lanka, Australia, and I was titled Miss Inspirational. 
Um, and that's when I realised that people do want to learn about my story, that I do have something different and I, I should be able to share it. I should not be ashamed of where I come from and who I am. And that's when I really started becoming an advocate for the deaf and for the for adoptees and adoption. And ever since then, I have been sharing my life story on social media and really opening up. And that's when I realised, ever since I accepted me for who I am, all of me, that others started accepting me as well. So it it was a challenging um, time in the sense growing up, finding that identity, accepting my hearing loss. But I have to say MLC did play a big role in my life. I have attended seven schools out of my 13 years of education and MLC was the last school that I attended. And I I thrived. I... I I, re I always asked my parents why did you not send me to MLC earlier because it's it's a school that accepts everyone, it's very inclusive and the opportunities at MLC st are just amazing. I went on the Euro tour where we visited uh, the UK, France, Belgium, Germany and Russia and that was the best three weeks of my life. Um, that was in year 11 and I absolutely loved it, loved it and the friends that I, the, the girls that I went with are still friends with me to this day, we still keep in touch. Um, it was a great experience of travelling and I would recommend, you know, if you have the chance and if you can, go overseas with the school, it's a great, it's a great opportunity. What am I doing now? I am in my final year at um, in law school. I'm now in Sydney, so I'm studying law at the University of Sydney, postgraduate law. So I'm doing the Jewish Doctor, and I will be completing at the end of this year. And I'm extremely looking forward to finishing, finishing, um, and just really um, entering the workforce. I have been accepted into the ANZ graduate program and I'm extremely looking forward to that and the opportunities that are in store in the following, in the coming year. Um, I, I never thought, I, I would never thought I would go into the corporate world. I was very passionate, I am still very passionate about human rights and about humanitarian law, but obviously life has taken me in a different path. And I'm just going with the flow and see where it will take me and just being open to new opportunities and learning new things. I would, you know, I, I'm i really and extremely grateful to MLC and the teachers of the deaf and the teachers. I have achieved what I have achieved because of the education that I received at MLC and I know school life can be draining, it can be hard, but really um, I advise all of you is just grab every opportunity that MLC offers and I miss school, I miss school and when people told me that in year 12 I did not believe them, um, I really do miss school, I miss seeing my friends every day, I miss not having to deal with adult life, but at the same time the world it's a beautiful place despite all the negativity and it really there's so many opportunities out there so just grab every opportunity you get be open-minded go with the flow at the same time and just be you be who you are be who you want to be and just don't be afraid don't be ashamed and that's the best advice I can give all of you I hope you learn something new during this Hearing Awareness Week and it's an absolute pleasure to be able to just share with you what I've been up to. So thank you very much for listening and um, have a great week.